and I'm very committed to protecting the public health of the people of the city of Knoxville and also having a phased uh, reopening because we are lucky that we have been able to flatten the curve and you know, our medical professionals have the PPE and, and capacity they need to, to withstand uh, any kind of issues with COVID-19. Uh, we are studying uh, how to proceed in a phased manner, in a carefully measured manner, and with cooperation and advice from the health department to do this safely. I know business owners across the community want to open, but they also want to protect their employees and protect their clients. So that's the kind of guidance we're working on developing, and we'll be sharing it as soon as we can. Thank you, Mayor Jacobs. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. We also have some uh, elected officials here today from Knox County, and I'd like to go ahead and recognize those. Uh, we have Commissioner John Schoonmaker, Commissioner Carson Daly, and also Commissioner Randy Smith, as well as uh, the clerks, Mike Hammond and Charlie Susano. Thank you all for being here. So, as you all know, on Monday, Governor Lee announced his plans to allow his safer at home order to expire on April 30th. Speaking for everyone uh, here with, with the county mayors, uh, we were delighted to see that. We understand that there, of course, will still be restrictions going forward, but we believe this is a great first step in getting our economy back online and getting the people of East Tennessee back to work. We're under no illusions about COVID-19. It's here, and it is something that we will have to deal with for the foreseeable future. So we encourage everyone to adhere to the prescribed health guidelines and to act responsibly to keep yourselves, your loved ones, and your families and your community healthy. Keeping in mind the COVID-19 issue, we can now also look at the uh, begin the work of healing our economy. One of the really great things about my job is getting to work with great people. And I am honored beyond words to serve the people of East Tennessee along with the people standing here. Our counties are connected in myriad ways. Some East Tennesseans work in one county and live in another. We cross county lines to go out to eat, to shop, to experience the great outdoors, to visit our friends and our relatives, and to take vacations. We are all committed to working together as a region to lift one another up. And I look forward to working with all of them and all of you to continue to make not only Knox County, but all of East Tennessee the best place to live, to work, and to raise a family. And now I'd like to introduce Anderson County Mayor Terry Frank for a few thoughts. Thank you, Mayor. First, I want to thank Mayor Jacobs for his leadership. He has brought many of us together as mayors, uh, conferencing with us weekly to share challenges, data, and best practices for the well being of our communities. This kind of regional cooperation leads to success. I also want to thank my fellow mayors here today. They are an incredible group of people, and it is truly an honor to work with them. In Anderson County, our percentage of positive test results has remained stable. And in fact, since April 4th, as a percentage, the trajectory has been downward, not up. Yesterday, the first wave of results from a mass testing event in our county hit the state's website. Out of 405 new tests reported yesterday in our county, only five were positive, meaning only 1.23% of cases tested. Our recoveries have consistently outnumbered our active positives over the last two and a half weeks. Tennessee is a leader in the nation in testing. As of yesterday, with 108,182 tests here in Tennessee, only New York, New Jersey, Michigan, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Louisiana, Florida, Washington, California, and Texas have performed more tests than we have in Tennessee. You will recognize that the majority of those states 
are our nation's hot spots or have much larger populations. Thanks to Governor Lee, Dr. Piercy, and our network of health departments, Tennessee has excelled at getting us the data we need for decision making in our communities. We also know that Tennessee leads the nation for lowest fatality rates. As of yesterday, only Arkansas, Nebraska, Utah, West Virginia, North Dakota, Hawaii, South Dakota, and Wyoming had lower rates. You will recognize the lower population and increased rural nature of those states. This is the data we need to make our next steps together as a region. Back to work. I want to be clear that getting back to work is more than a cash register transaction. It also means access to an entire spectrum of health care, from cancer screenings to dental work. It means the ability to put food on the table and keep a roof over your head. It means reopening a support network that has kept many people going from T PTSD support to AA meetings to your local church. For many of us, we are blessed to have family at home, but for a great many in the community, work is family, and the stress of isolation has its own negative health consequences. As a local leader, I am constantly exposed to data linking poverty and loneliness to negative health outcomes. We know and understand this as a fact, not just locally, but we see it globally. From the president and CDC to Governor Lee and our local health departments, our communities have been equipped with the health guidance we need to be smart and cautious in protecting each other as we get back to work. I'm proud of our community, our region, and our state. We have embodied the volunteer spirit in adapting, engaging, and following safe health practices. We have led the way in flattening the curve, and I'm confident we will lead the way as we get back to work with innovative, cautious, and proactive steps to remain healthy and safe. May God bless Tennessee. Thank you. And uh, now, Blount County Mayor Ed Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor Jacobs. And uh, what I want to say is how glad I am to hear of the governor not extending the safer home executive orders. We need to reopen our economy and allow people to get back to work. Balancing that with concern for the health of our citizens means we begin reopening our economy while implementing all recommended physical distancing, sanitizing, safety measures that are in place in phase one of the president's plan and this allows us to open and do it safely and sl slowly. While the governor's orders may be expiring, the virus is still very serious, and it will take us continuing efforts to implement preventive safety measures to keep the spread of the virus very low. I'm proud of the businesses and the citizens of our county and all of East Tennessee, and our neighboring counties have, have stepped up just as we have in Blount County, for the, and for all the sacrifices they are they have made over the last few months, they're, be to commend, they're to be commended. Our small businesses, and especially our hospital in Blount County, has sacrificed so much. I appreciate so much the partnerships and the cooperation we have with all of these mayors that I stand here with today with. Uh, that We've had conversations sometimes once or twice a week. Uh, this, this has been a great, uh, uh, I guess during this time, this has been, we've been a support group for one another, and it's it's been amazing have, having them here uh, by my side. It'll take the commitment of all of us as we try to regain some normalcy. Let's do our individual responsibilities. Let's all do our individual responsibilities to prevent and keep the spread of the COVID-19 slow. We do not want to undo all the progress we have made under the Safer at Home orders, and we invite restrictions by, or invite restrictions back on our citizens. Let's continue to be diligent, do all the right things that make East Tennessee the best place to live. Remember, let's work strong, let's work honest, and let's all work together. At this time, I'd like to introduce Jefferson County Mayor Mark Potts. Thank you, Mayor Jacobs, and all our fellow 
mayors that work with us, elected officials. What I see today is the solidarity of the mayors of East Tennessee. We are East Tennessee, and East Tennessee always puts its best foot forward during times of crisis and hard times. We see the flattening of the curve because our residents and the people of our counties and our cities have taken notice of the COVID-19 and our work together with our residents, we flatten the curve. It is time to reopen the economy in a phased effort and we support Governor Lee and thank you Mayor Jacobs for having this opportunity. We will work together, we will get through this crisis and our commitment is we'll work together as mayors of East Tennessee and cities of East Tennessee and we'll lead the nation in how to recover our economy and how to move forward. Thank you for your time. Uh, and in the uh, spirit of social distancing, make sure that we're keeping some distance, folks, because people are kind of migrating together. Uh, and I'd like to introduce from Loudoun County, uh, County Mayor Buddy Bradshaw now, please. Thank you, Mayor Jacobs. And just to uh, echo what Mayor Frank said, is uh, thank you personally for taking the lead in this and helping keeping us all connected. And uh, with me today is also Loudoun City Mayor Jeff Harris, along with Lenore City Mayor Tony Akins. I've also been in contact with the Philadelphia Mayor Chris Miller, as well as Greenback Mayor Dwayne Birchfield. The wisdom for Governor Lee to allow this order to expire is an opportunity. As we start to phase back into what will be a sense of normalcy for the first time in several weeks, it is important that we continue to be vigilant in our everyday care of each other. Our guidelines need to stay in place. Even as we, our restaurants and small businesses begin to reopen, it's important to uh, just continue to not be reckless. It is an opportunity for our communities to rise again. It's an opportunity for us to be amongst each other again, and people are going stir crazy, and I realize that, but it's still, it, it's not an excuse to be reckless and endanger other folks. The small businesses are the ones that are suffering the worst right now, and so uh, I've encouraged uh, Loudoun County residents, and, and I'll encourage your other counties, you know, shop local, and local dollars mean local jobs, and that's important. The sense of community that uh, not just around and around Loudoun County, but around this whole region has just been uh, overwhelming. We've came together as there's been no egos, there's been no agendas. We've come together to work for what's best for our communities, and that's what uh, government should really be about. As we move forward, uh, you know, we are strongly encouraging, continue to do your social distancing, follow guidelines set down as far as half capacity, for instance, for restaurants, follow those. The virus is here and it may very well be here forever. And if we wait for it to go away before we restart our lives, we may be waiting forever. And so if you are of the more susceptible, uh, if you have immunodeficiency disease or, or elderly, and you need help, reach out. But continuing to work together is what's got us here. Loudoun County is right around a 1%. We have five active cases, six active cases out of 55,000 residents. So at about a 1% active rate, we're ready to go back to work. We're ready to go back to business, and we're ready to stand back up and, and regain some sense of normalcy, at least uh, for the time being. And again, I thank uh, all the mayors here that have, uh, that have stepped, we've all stepped up, we've worked together, and it's just, uh, Mayor Jacobs, you've been a huge part of that, and appreciate that, and we're gonna be all right. It just takes us all working together. Thank you. Rowan County Executive Ron Woody. Ron, do you have some thoughts, please? Thank you, Mayor Jacobs. Uh, we appreciate this opportunity to come and share a few uh, words about uh, what, we've, what we're doing, what we've been doing, and where we're going. Uh, it has been an honor to work with the mayor that you see behind me here. Uh, we have a conference call uh, once a week. Some of us have it two times a week, trying to get to make the best decisions for our citizens. I was thinking on the way up here, it's kind of like uh, we're on a boat. And we're trying to get to a safe harbor, but we're in uncharted waters. There's hazards below us. There's storms in our horizon. And some of those is the virus itself. Some of it is our local economies. Uh, some of it is the uh, health and well, 
being of us as individuals. So what we're trying to do is get to the safe harbor. We're getting, we want to get there while we have still resources on the boat. So I appreciate everybody's decision, the governors, the mayors, in trying to open back up our economies because it is important for the individuals who are at home to get back to work. It's important for our small businesses to get back to work. We are in uncharted waters. We'll make some decisions that may not look back and say, we wish we did something different. We wish we'd turned the boat in one direction instead of the other. We may get a few dents or scratches in our hulls, but we'll work together. And I tell you, I'd, I'd love to hug every one of these men and women here because we do come together and we support each other. So after this virus is over, maybe I'll do that. So you may want to stay. Yeah, yeah, you may want to stand back. But, you know, a decision is a choice among alternatives. And so we're making decisions each and every day. And we are pray prayerfully will make the right decisions for our citizens and our country. So there's two things I really want the public to uh, help us with. Two words. One is respect. We need to respect each other as we go forth, whether you wear masks or don't, don't wear masks. Uh, whether you're social distance or not, let's try to respect each other. But more important than that, and I think Mayor Jacobs said it, we need to be responsible. We need to be responsible citizens. So as we go through this, we may have to change the course of the boat occasionally, but I think, we've made a, I think the governor's made a good decision, and I think we're making a good decision to try to open back up our economy. So let's pray for our country, pray for our citizens, let's be respectful, and let's be responsible. At this time, I'd like to I have the privilege every now and then to introduce the next county mayor. Uh, he is our uh, longest serving, I will not say the oldest, but he's our longest serving county mayor. Uh, he's been through trials and tribulations from fires to floods to um, a pandemic now, or maybe a, uh, yeah, a pandemic. So uh, we used to call him grandfather. I'm about ready to call him Moses. So, uh, Larry, would you come up here and join us and share us a few words? Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I appreciate you saying that I'm not the oldest because usually they say that. Uh, I'm glad to be here today. I want to thank uh, all the county mayors, and particularly uh, Mayor Jacobs. Uh, I've told them at home if I do anything that they don't like, it's on the advice of Mayor Jacobs, and they need to come down here and jump on him. So I think he's better able to handle them than I am. So, uh, uh, no, we, uh, we all have uh, something in common here today, and that is our number one priority, and that's the safety and health of our citizens. And we're all concerned about that. We've been working for the past uh, several weeks trying to... Uh, to do things that would ensure that. You know, some folks have said, uh, well, one way to ensure that is that we stay at home until we get a vaccine or until, we, uh, uh, until this goes away. Well, we all understand today that that's not sustainable, that we're not gonna be able to do that, uh, and, and that we're going to have to figure out a way to safely and, and working with our health professionals uh, to begin to phase in opening up our economy. That's what we're doing in Sevier County. We have been, uh, as you all know, Sevier County's primary uh, 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 industry is tourism, and we have been devastated by this pandemic. Uh, you can drive from uh, the 407 exit all the way to the National Park, and you can see that uh, uh, the, you'll see very few cars, very few people, and that's very unusual in our part of the world. Uh, we want to get to the point we have uh, respectfully asked our visitors uh, uh, to, to not come until it's safe for them and us. Uh, we're beginning to realize that we're going to move in the direction of a phased opening uh, not only here, but in East Tennessee, that we are working with our city mayors and the, and the county mayors to come up with the best practices. Uh, you know, our people are smart. Our businesses are smart. We don't have to tell them a lot. They, I've already talked to a lot of businesses that know that uh, uh, they have got to institute best practices 
to make their employees safe, to make their customers safe, to make our citizens safe. They understand this, and we're already uh, uh, working uh, together to make sure that our businesses get that out to the public, that uh, they know what to do, they know uh, the uh, s social distancing, they know the other things that we need to do to be safe, and they're going to practice those. And, and uh, that I am uh, confident you have seen the, our people's ability to practice uh, good uh, s standards already. The fact that, our, uh, that we are not a hot spot here in East Tennessee, that, that we have leveled the curve. We have five active cases in Sevier County. We're thankful for that. But we, I have confidence in our citizens that uh, they are going to do what is necessary to make sure that we can begin to open businesses and that we can, uh, in Sevier County, begin to welcome folks back in a manner that they feel comfortable and as safe as we possibly can, while at the same time urging our most vulnerable citizens to take extra precautions. We want them to do that because certainly uh, we do not want the spread of this virus. We do not uh, want anyone to get sick, and we're going to do everything, not just in Sevier County, but in East Tennessee. We're doing everything we possibly can to make that a reality. So, uh, again, I'm glad to be here today with the fellow uh, mayors, and, and I appreciate all of their efforts, and we're going to continue working together until we uh, uh, defeat this pandemic, and, and we will. We will because of the resilience of our people, and we will because of the faith that we have here in, in East Tennessee, the Bible Belt. We all have that faith, and we all have that resilience, so we're going to get through this, and, and I think that we will be, uh, uh, be even better and, and bigger after we get through all of these challenges. Thank you. And... Uh... Union County Mayor Jason Bailey. Jason, you'd like to say a few words, please? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Jacobs, and uh, all the mayors here. Um, as I just basically want to get up here and say ditto because I agree with everything that all these mayors have said. Um, I appreciate their support, and uh, of course, uh, Mayor Jacobs for putting this together, and also our friends here at Knox County for putting this together for us. But um, I am happy with Governor Lee's decision to reopen, and I think I can speak for my fellow Union Countyans that they are ready as well. We're ready to get back to work in Union County. Uh, we are a very small rural county uh, with a population of around 20,000, and out of that 20,000, we have had three cases with two recovered, so now we only have one, which is wonderful. But uh, we're ready to get back to business. Um, our folks in Union County, they have listened to the recommendations. They have practiced social distancing. And uh, they've just done a fantastic job. All of our county employees, our government employees, and all of our citizens, I'm just so happy that uh, Union County, we are the place that we are, and, and we do great things there. And I'm just so proud of them and so happy. Um, I do want to say that we are, we're ready to get back to business. Union County is ready to go, and, and I can't wait because, quite frankly, folks, I really need a haircut, and I can't wait for my barber to say, come on down. So, uh, so we're ready to get back to work, and thank you to all the folks who came out today, and thank you to all the, the county mayors here. We're all in this together, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much. And at this time, it's my pleasure to welcome back to the podium Mayor Glenn Jacobs. Thank you, sir. Granger County Mayor Mike Bird. Could not be here today, but he does send his regards. Frankly, I wish he had sent some tomatoes instead, but his regards are pretty good too. Um, as you can see, we are all committed to working together. The counties here in East Tennessee, uh, the cities, uh, the towns. Um, for our part, we're working with the uh, city of Knoxville on a joint task force that will come up with a phased reopening plan, which we should announce very soon. So I appreciate Mayor and Cannon and her office for working on that. Uh, in closing, I'd like to leave you all with this. Our country, our communities, our counties, they have been in the dreadful clench of a frightful dark night. But like always happens here in East Tennessee, dawn is beginning to break over the Smokies. And the first, first rays of sunlight are punching through that fell darkness bringing what we need most, and that's hope. Never before has it been more beautiful or more welcome. So again, thank you all for being here, uh, and I, we'll open the floor up for questions now, and I think that uh, I think the mayors are going to 
uh, stay for a little while if anyone has any one-on-one -on -one questions they'd like to ask. So does anyone from the media have any questions? For, and for anyone. Yes. Yeah, I got a, a tweet during all this asking if individual attorneys are allowed to order antibody tests. Do you know that? that I don't know. Uh, that would uh, be something that the health department uh, would would probably have information on. Uh, did you get anybody? Yeah. I, yeah, I, th I think we could direct that towards the health departments. Yeah, yes. Uh, Um, again, I don't know the aggregate. I know here in Knox County we've done about 35, well, probably more than 3,500 tests. Uh, in Knox County we had opened uh, a drive-through testing facility at Engineering and Public Works. Uh, there was huge demand. Uh, we did 400 tests one day. Uh, I have made a request, as well as Dr. Buchanan has made a request to the state for more testing supplies. Um, you know, as you know, the governor announced that asymptomatic people uh, would be tested uh, and that would be free. So that's, that's put a lot of demand on testing and we're all working to accommodate that. Um, but just like every other resource, the, you know, the tests are, you know, they have to be produced and they have to be distributed. So that's kind of the lift right now. Um, but I know here in Knox County alone that we've done 3,500 tests. You could go to the state website and pull off the number for all the other counties too. Yes. Yes. I don't. That that would be a message uh, for them. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, have to direct that to direct that to, to the governor's office, Jesse. Right. And you also had your own proposal right. last week. Well, we're putting, and, and, you know, and I think they're all going to look pretty, pretty much the same. Um, so it's what I'm, kind of well, the, the, when will we know sure. Hopefully we'll have our task force back uh, by the, before the end of the week, correct, Mayor? Yeah. And then, of course, we'll have to see what the governor says as well and, and work that into it. Uh, but, yeah, we would, we would be looking for some before the end of the week. The governor's planning, of course, on, I think, uh, of course, state parks open up Friday, and I think you talked about some other businesses maybe on this coming Monday. Uh, so, yeah, we've got to we got to get it out there pretty quickly, but we are working on it. Thank you. Well, with our task force, it will it will be metrics. Of, you know, we know as we do more testing, we're going to see more cases. Uh, so, uh, talked. Uh, on a conference call with Mayor Kincannon and, and the governor uh, the other day, you know, so it'll be the number of cases and also a heavy waiting on hospitalizations and, uh, of course, we have tragically deaths as well. Um, you know, I think the most important thing is, you know, the, the virus is going to spread, um, and there's not a whole lot we can do about that. I mean, when we talk about flattening the curve, we're not going to stomp the thing out. I wish we could, uh, but that's not going to happen. So, you know, the idea is to not stress our hospital resources here in East Tennessee. The hospitals are only about 50% occupied, so they've done a very good job of preparing for this, and uh, we've also done a pretty good job with us uh, acquiring PPE. Um, so it's the number of new cases, especially the number of hospitalizations. Uh, you know, the the disaster scenario is if this thing were to get into like a long-term uh, living facility or something like that. So we really have to make sure that, uh, that those are being isolated and all everything that could possibly be done uh, is being done. And then also, you don't want to see a huge spike in the number of cases. You know, you just, you know, cases are probably going to go up as people come in more contact with each other, uh, but that, we need that to be manageable so it doesn't overload the hospital system. Uh, that, that is something we haven't decided yet. I'm sure that we will, you know, because the task force is working on that. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to look at all that. And I'm not sure what the governor is going to do with his either, but he probably will. Ma yes? Can you, oh, I'm sorry, repeat the questions. Sure, sure.
The question is, uh, uh, in Sevier County, are we planning to start reopening businesses on May 1st? And the answer is yes, but we're uh, hoping to do that on a, uh, in a progressive manner. Uh, we're meeting today with the mayors, city managers, tourism officials, economic development folks. Uh, we have a, uh, a plan that we're putting together that we're going to, it will dovetail with the governor's plan. Uh, requesting how businesses and our tourism in industry ramp up over the next month and it's a gradual uh, 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 progressive uh, situation that that we're in and we're going to be as, as has already been said earlier we're going to be monitoring how uh, many cases we have and how uh, that is how our gradual opening is affecting those cases and and addressing that as we go along but we will have a document later on this week that we're going to make available uh, to our businesses and so far I've talked to a lot of them and as I said earlier they they are doing a lot of things for instance I've talked to some hotel motel owners and their their uh, desk clerks going to wear masks they're uh, 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 maids are going to wear masks, they're going to clean the rooms uh, uh, in a special way, they're going to put uh, plexiglass on the front, and businesses are, are know that those kind of steps are going to make a difference about people feeling safe to come back. So I think all of our businesses in Sevier County and I assume in East Tennessee are going to be taking similar steps and are going to be letting the public know here's what we're doing to make sure you're as safe as possible. So we are going to start opening May 1st but it won't be just everything uh, open at once. It will be a gradual progressive opening that we're going to monitor and try to address in as safe as manner as possible. And on that way, how do you decide who gets to go first? You have so many big businesses. Well, I mean, I don't think it's a matter of who gets to go first. I think, for instance, some of the restaurants are talking about opening uh, with maybe 50% capacity and doing the social distancing that, that, we, uh, that we did before we closed down. And, and so uh, uh, I think they're talking about, you know, some of the other, some of the retail stores are talking about uh, just letting so many customers in at a time, making sure they have the social distancing and make sure the uh, attendants in those stores have the mask and continue to wash your hands and, and have uh, hand sanitizer everywhere. So we uh, actually, our moonshine industry has been great on that. If, if folks won't drink that, if they'll use it on their hands, It'll it'll help them, I think. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, <clears throat> so it's going to be a a, a collective effort uh, to make sure that our citizens and our visitors are safe, and it's going to be a gradual ramp up over the next several weeks, and we're going to monitor it all along. Right. Um, that, that'll be with the health department in some cases, you know, with the uh, discretion of the individual counties and municipalities. I think one thing that we can't stress enough is we've all up here talked about personal responsibility and responsibilities of businesses to ensure that their uh, customer safety and health. And that is a huge part of it, you know. Um, and the great thing is we live in an area where people take that seriously. And uh, I think that's a large part of the reason that we haven't seen, um, we've been able to avoid um, huge brunt of this issue. Um, so it'll, it'll, that'll probably vary county by county, um, but a lot of it's the health department. And speaking of the health department, um, here in Knox County, of course, we have our own health department. You're asking about metrics. Uh, a lot of it uh, is the expertise of Dr. Martha Buchanan, uh, who is our public health officer. She has done a wonderful job throughout this entire crisis, and our health department here in Knox County has done a great job. Uh, you'll see that our recovery rate is shows much higher than the rest of the state, and that's actually not a statistical anomaly. The reason for that is because our health department does such a great job of tracking individuals with this illness, and they have they have uh, just done a fantastic job. And I think I'd be remiss uh, on behalf of everybody if I didn't thank our health departments, our public health officials, and everyone that works in our health care system uh, for the outstanding work and very hard work that all of them have done.
Somebody else? Okay. Um, so I think that's it. And like I said, if anyone has any individual questions, um, the mayor's probably, it's a beautiful place to stay for a little bit. So I think they'll stay for a little bit. Thank you.